Hey guys, I spent countless hours testing this chip to find out why Intel is better and finally got it. It is fast in almost every way, but by how much is where it matters. Let's get into it. Before we dive deep into the benchmarks, let's quickly talk about the latest Intel 13th gen and what has changed. In our example, we have i7-13700K, the high-end chip that used to be more gaming focused, but now after testing, I'm not so sure. Price-wise, it looks like it'll be around $400 mark, which is the Ryzen 5 7700X region. As compared to the last generation, there are a few significant changes, starting with the core counts. While we retain eight performance cores with multi-threading enabled, we double the efficiency cores from four to eight. Intel has also managed to push boost frequency up by 400 megahertz on both P and E cores, which in turn increased the maximum turbo power to 253 watts. The other change is fast memory controller, as well as higher speed iGPU. In other words, on paper, it almost seems like this chip is the Intel's overclocked last gen 12900K, as the rest looks very similar. It's not all positive though. Since Intel killed off Optin business, they also don't have any support for it on this new chip. While this may be a very niche use case, it's still important to note. With the differences out of the way, let's cover the two main similarities, and they are very, very sweet. The first is compatibility with the existing Z690 motherboards, so if you own one and you just want to upgrade the CPU, just flash the new BIOS and you're good to go. Or if you're trying to build on a budget, pick up a used one and you'll likely save a few bucks. The other thing which is also relevant to saving a few bucks, 13th gen is still supporting DDR4, which is still considerably cheaper than DDR5. Yes, the new RAM is faster and is dropping in price, but you still can't beat price to performance with DDR4. This is where I feel Intel is currently a bit more competitive as an option, or at least on paper. With this out of the way, let's get into the benchmarks. For our test benches, we're using the last gen 12900K as well as the last and current gen AMD chips for comparison. Let's start with gaming, with the first game being Horizon Zero Dawn, where the new Intel i7 is taking the lead from the last gen i9 by 7% on average FPS and 9% on the 1 percentiles. This Intel CPU is also leading by 9% average FPS and 16% on the 1 percentiles over the 7700X, which is priced very closely. The next game is Shadow of a Tomb Raider, where 13700K is leading over 12900K, but is outmatched by both of the new Ryzen chips. The difference in average FPS to the 7700X is only 3% though, and Intel chip has 3% higher 1 percentiles, so I'd probably call that a tie. In Fortnite, yet again we see 13700K is better than 12900K and losing out to the 8-core 7700X. We only see a difference of 4% on average FPS, but the difference is still there. Last game on this list is Overwatch, the original one, and just like we covered in the Ryzen review, this game has 400 FPS limit, so when we increase the graphics settings, we get bottlenecked by the GPU. If we keep it as is, we get to the game FPS limiter, so the results here are not conclusive. But with these limitations, we actually see that both Intel CPUs perform very close, and 13700K is actually 10% more power efficient as shown in FPS per 10 watts. This will be very relevant shortly when we jump into the productivity workloads, but before that, for those who are interested in the integrated GPU performance, here's Overwatch with approximately a 3% improvement over 12900K and actually somewhat playable frame rates. And in Fortnite on iGPU, we see small improvements over 12900K, but this is still really far behind AMD's offering. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. Now let's jump into productivity, starting with Blender Benchmark, where 13700K is second best on every test, and it scores 9% or higher than 12900K. In V-Ray, we see the same thing. The new Intel chip is 13% faster than its predecessor, and is beating out the last generation productivity beast from AMD, the 5950X by 4%. Next, we have Blender Scandals demo rendering, starting with the results. 13700K is about 6.5% faster than the 12900K and 5.5% faster than the Ryzen 5950X. Those extra efficiency cores are clearly doing their job. When we look at the thermals, just like last generation, we still hit 100 degrees and start thermal throttling. So the dual tower that we have here is simply not enough to tame the CPU and we're leaving more performance on the table. This is clearly visible in the frequency graph. The 13700K starts at 5.1 GHz and then slowly creeps down to 4.8 GHz. Thing to note here, 12900K is running slower at just over 4.6 GHz throughout the whole test. Now, this is where it gets interesting. 
even though the new CPU on paper has high TDP, due to our thermal limitations, it does not boost all the way and actually delivers much more power efficient results. The difference at the highest point is 40 watts, which is over 70% lower than the 12900K. And if you remember from the first graph, he completes the test 6.5% quicker. So by having extra e cores and architectural optimizations, it is more efficient and faster. This leads us well to the conclusion. I don't want to start with some considerations. Both 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs run hot and fast for the limited cores that they possessed when compared to AMD. Now this i7 model clearly outperforms the previous top of the line 12900K. For gaming, cooling is not as critical as it is for the extended productivity workloads. So getting a dual tower cooler like this will get you plenty of performance. As I mentioned earlier, 13th gen can be used on the older Z690 motherboards or even B660 if you forego the overclocking. And with cheaper DDR4 memory, you could build something much cheaper than the Ryzen 7000 series is currently offering. This would of course have some performance sacrifices, but the option is there. Overall, I was very skeptical of this launch, but I'm pleased with the 13700K performance in both gaming and productivity. It could be used in a great hybrid build without the need of the highest end CPU, which I'm sure will have plenty of interest. Let us know what you think about this. If you want to check out any other items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.